Why is it so important for a separate IoT network? Well, in this video today, I'm gonna to be showing you what could happen if a malicious piece of code was to find itself on your IoT device and what it could find on your network. If you missed my video on how to set up an IoT network, there'll be a link popping up on the screen now, so feel free to check that out or even after this video. So in the world we live in today, there are many tools that can be used to get into the inside of our network, but the question is, what can they do? IoT devices are internet facing 24 seven, so a bit of bad code, or if someone works out how to get into these devices, you could find yourself exposing a lot of data that you thought was safe. I will be using a couple of tools to show you what I can do using my Raspberry Pi acting as an IoT device. Do note, all the stuff I am showing you today are some basic tools that can be found out there. Hackers will be a lot quicker at finding your data and exporting it out. Just before we get started, if you do like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe and share if you've enjoyed this video. If you would like me to make more like this or you want to learn more about some of the tools that I've used today, please let me know in the comments below. Anyway, let's get started. If you've seen the last video, you will remember that we set up an IoT network and we have my home network as well. So the two networks we'll be looking at at the moment is IoT and the LAN network just here. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go across my um, network and I'm gonna, I've got a Raspberry Pi that's set on my LAN network, which is gonna be my makeshift IoT device. Um, so what I've got is, for example, that's there, it's downloaded a new piece of code and it has something rogue in there. So I just wanna show you what I can pick up in terms of a scan perspective. Um, just click that. So, if I just do nmap uh, minus, sorry, nmap 110.1.1.0 slash 24. So, what I'm doing now, um, this is a tool that basically goes across that entire network and it can be quite in depth. It can scan every port for every IP, which can take quite a while, but just doing it like this will actually go out and scan the top. Uh, 1000 ports of your network and it will go and see what's available so we'll give that a few minutes that does take a little while to run so we'll let that run and we'll come back and see what it's found I'm gonna log into the Raspberry Pi so we can go SSH if I'm typing uh, SSH Pi at 10.1.1.184 I know that's the IP of it we log in and then we're gonna use a tool called nmap. So we do nmap 10.1.1.0 slash 24. So so uh, that didn't take that didn't take too long. So I'm just gonna scroll up to the top so we'll have a little look across the domain and what this brings back. So just picture at the point here that your IoT device, a malicious piece of code and now it's found this on your network. So this is the sort of what you need to be thinking about as we're going through this. So it's found my uh, gateway, okay? Um, it's found all the relevant ports on here that are open um, just by one simple command. Um, we found some other things with an FTP service, port 80, uh, so 10.1.1.10, .1 .1 um, I think, yeah, I know that's my uh, home automation stuff, so that would literally be straight in. Um, let's have a little look down here. So we know here, that, so this one right here, this is a printer. So what have we got? 10.1.1.81. So if I go across, so let's have a look. So 10.1.1.81. There we go, I'm straight into my printer. So. It's as easy as that, it's ran one command and it's able to get into your printer. Now you're probably thinking, big deal, it's just a printer, um, but it's a start. Like I said, the tools that I'm showing you are very, um, they're very simple, but there are a lot more complex, a lot more advanced tools that would do something a little bit quicker than this. So another one here, a TiVo device, you could probably just go straight into there and it will give you a, a prompt to log in. So let's try that, 101193. So if we go HTTPS kind of forward slash forward slash 101193 and there we go. So yeah, 
just uh, as easy as this. We're going straight in, it's asking for a username and password, but it then opens it up for a uh, brute force attack where you would just keep hitting it with username and passwords until you get in. Um, that's another thing that could happen. So that is quite interesting how it finds all of this stuff and the ports that it's using. So it could well intervene with some of these. So you can see now it's starting to pick up also, if I bring this up, you can see it's picking up my Unify devices. So it can start to get a picture of what your network looks like. So that's just finding out what is on your network. Now it's a case of, okay, what can we do once we find out what's on your network? So let me just scroll up quickly. Okay, right, so we found here, we found my MacBook Pro. We know the IP address, 10.1.1.02, and it's showing the thousand ports that it scanned, they're all closed. Okay, great, that's a good start. The ports are closed, it means it can't get access to it. However, that's not the end of it. It can still find some more information. So I'm gonna quickly show you this. So just give me one second while I clear my screen. I have my uh, Raspberry Pi, um, set up on here so I can get to it via VNC. So we're on here now. Um, so on here I'm going to load up Wireshark. Just do that again. Sorry, let's just do that under root sudo Wireshark. So I have my Raspberry Pi device which is on the IoT network, uh, which is on my normal network, um, which is pretending to be an IoT device. I'm also quickly going to run a quick command on the Raspberry Pi as well. Um, what this is, uh, is basically setting something up called a man in the middle attack. So what this does, I'll just write this in and then I'll tell you exactly what it does. This code is available out there, but if you want me to go through this in further detail, drop me a comment below and maybe it's another video I can look at. Um, but what we specified is what the gateway address is going to be and what the IP address is of the laptop. So I've just put that in just there. So now we can run that and now it's going to go off and do what it needs to do. So we'll let that run. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to go and we're going to select, we want the wireless LAN capture. So we're going to just, just going to stop that a sec. There's a lot of stuff that will go across on the network. I found a couple of websites that are not using encrypted traffic when you go to browse them. So I'm going to browse to a couple of websites and then I'm going to show you um, some of the data that that comes through. So we'll start capturing um, we'll click continue. Um, so let's just go to this page. Um, you can't see this at the moment. You're just seeing a load of traffic, but I'm just browsing through this non secure website and we'll also browse through another one and then I'm just going to go to a couple of secure websites as well. Okay, so that's in that I guess 30, well probably a minute maybe, less than that. We've captured nearly no, 11,000 packets um, just going across your network. Now you can imagine in that 30 seconds you have that many packets going across your network. You can just imagine what a busy network looks like. But what I'm going to do first, I'm going to type in HTTP at the top and I want to filter the traffic by HTTP and I want to see some of the pages that were requested. So if we right click on this one for example and go to follow and if we go to HTTP stream, we can actually see everything in here is in open text. So hey, uh, I've gone to this website, I found all this data, it's giving me all of its code now you can just imagine if you're logging into this website, if it's not encrypted, your data is going to be on here. So I'm Mr. IoT device, I've gone onto your network to see what you're doing and I found this. So keep that one in mind, that is for HTTP websites. Um, so when you are browsing, always keep that one in mind on what you're looking at and make sure your website is encrypted. So with the HTTPS traffic, I know it's not gonna show up as clear text. So as you saw, so as you can see, if we follow a stream of, uh, of a packet, this comes back with a load of um, gibberish that you can't even read. This basically means the, the traffic is encrypted. Now I know for this one here, I was trying to go to google.com, which we know uses HTTPS. 
So this basically means that the traffic is not readable. Now that being said, uh, I'm not saying it's completely foolproof, but this obviously, but when you're browsing to HTTP sites, just keep wary that your data is not encrypted. Let me show you what would happen if we moved the Raspberry Pi slash IoT device to the IoT network and what can it see and what it can't see. So let's start by quickly going to here. Um, if we go to devices, sorry clients, uh, there's my Raspberry Pi. So I actually want to see what port that's plugged into. That's gone into port 4. So if we go to devices, if we go to our switch, and if we move port 4 into our IoT network and click apply, what I'm going to quickly do for that now is I'm just going to go across to the VNC and I'm just going to say, um, just gonna close that and go reboot. Okay, there we have it. So the Raspberry Pi is now on a new network. Now, again, if you followed the video last time, you would have seen that we allowed all traffic from LAN to IoT, but nothing back from IoT to LAN. So, so let's quickly go and telnet, uh, sorry, SSH across to the Raspberry Pi. All right, 10.107.1.203, uh, I think it was. Yep, there we go. So, so now we're back on that side. So um, we're now, so if I do IPA, you can see the IP address is on that network. I am joined both by wired and wireless. So let's start with what we did with our first tool. Let's run Nmap on 10.1.1.0 slash 24. So we'll let that go off and run and let's see what that does if it comes back with anything. So this would be the first test. There we go. <laughs> that was quick. So it's pretty much gone and said, hey, this scan this whole network, but I can only find your default gateway. So that's what this is. That's what these ports are. So 10.1.1, that's all my default gateway. Um, which is fine, you would expect it to find the default gateway because um, that's where it goes to. So that's number one, that's basically stopped anything being scanned across the network. So if you remember um, when we did the scan before, there was a whole list. We found printers, um, we found printers, the TiVo devices, we found the MacBook Pro. So we found everything basically on that network. So that's the first one. Now, if we try and do the man in the middle attack again, so just clear the screen. Um, I'm going to type in the address again and we'll see what we can find in the capture. Okay, so that's typed in, so we're trying the same thing again, so let's run this. And there we go, that's that's going off now. Um, so it's going to try and, and figure out what's going on there. So this is the Raspberry Pi that's now on the IoT network, so we're doing uh, sudo Wireshark. So that's while that's loading, I have my websites ready again. So there will be stuff on here, it just won't be, um, there'll be the network trying to figure out what's going on, but there's nothing, hopefully we won't find any HTTP traffic. So let's try and go there. So I'm browsing the website, uh, clicking in various places, and you can see how much more secure your network is. Um, I'm across this, trying to figure out what's going on. I'm doing the um, exactly the same thing I was doing last time. If I had a syslog server set up on the firewall on my Unify, it would probably show that the traffic being blocked. Perhaps that's another video I could probably cover. Let me know if you want to see this. So that's now blocking the traffic coming back from one side to another. So I hope this clears up a few things about why it's so important to have a IoT network and to keep things that are external facing on a separate network. I hope you found this video useful. As I said at the start of this, the tools I've used are very basic and are very easy to capture certain data. Luckily nowadays, a lot of websites are using HTTPS. However, there are more sophisticated tools out there than what I'm showing you that can do a lot more damage. 
Also, everything I showed you was me just extracting information. There can be other things that can be done across your network, such as hitting your performance or even targeting certain machines for stuff to happen. That could cause more permanent damage. Again, if you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the subscribe button, like and do share. This is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.